Hello everyone, Lilac here, and uh, just so you're wondering, um, today's Dub Talk episode was really, really long. We had a lot to say about these shows for today, so I had to split this uh, episode up into two parts. Uh, so this is part one that you're watching right now. Um, I'll leave an annotation at the end for you to get to part two. Uh, so yeah, have fun and enjoy this wonderful edition of Lilac Talks Dubs. Hello everyone, welcome to Lilac Talk Stubs, where I talk about a recent dub announcement or revisit a series I've reviewed, but this time talk about its dub. You're probably wondering why I'm not currently on camera for this episode. Well, it's kind of because some people decided to uh, crash the party and join me for today. Hi. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> yes, um, today I have with me... Uh, you probably have seen him quite a few times in videos or other things. I have Spaceman Hardy with me. Howdy. And uh, a new voice you probably have never heard here before, Miss Megan. Hi. And we're going to be having some fun talking about some stuff. Um, specifically, uh, during a recent convention visit, uh, Funimation Entertainment finally announced which shows they are doing for broadcast dubs this season. And it's basically uh, almost everything they got, save for a few things. Yeah, because screw Samurai Warriors. <laughs> yes. Um, so we're Yay, getting dubs Kami for Sama Ro Kiss. Shut up, I'm getting to it. So we're getting dubs for Rolling Girls, World Break, um, Kami Sama Kiss Season 2, Absolute Duo, Yurikuma Adashi, Yon of the Dawn Season 2, which doesn't make much sense, and Maria the Virgin Witch, but we're not just getting all of those because they were also announced a new weekly live stream partnering with screw tack called double talk where they show some broadcast of episodes of the biggest properties they have for the season and then have a discussion afterwards so the three series that were announced to be part of this initiative are going to be the same ones we're going to be covering today so that's going to be assassination classroom uh death parade and tokyo ghoul route a aka season two Woohoo! <laughs> excitement how this Yay. is going to work is we're going to go through each show, um, talk about our predictions that we had for different cast members, talk about the final casting choices, or at least some of them, some more predictions about uh, cast members that haven't been announced yet, and maybe discuss here and there our thoughts on the first episode of each of these dubs, because all three of us did see the first episodes of these three shows. Um, and see what we think of these performances thus far. So does that sound good to you guys? Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, so yeah. let's start. Yes, really. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Um, so let's start with Assassination Classroom. Which we will not be calling Ass Class. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, you, Since you, like yelled at me for that when I'm referring it to A class. Yeah, don't. Yeah, ass class is stupid. It really is. <laughs> ass ass class. Um, for those who may not know about Assassination Classroom, basically the idea of this uh, series is there's this weird alien creature, yellow tentacle things, and um, he's a teacher for this um, class who's seen as like the lowest rung of society in, this, in a sense and what they have to do is by the end of the school year they have to try and assassinate him mm -hmm. or else the teacher is going to just destroy it, the world yeah. so that's the basic premise of this um it's kind of like uh it's kind of like stand and deliver meets men in black kind of yeah yeah um even though i haven't seen either of those, right. <laughs> but i get what you're saying um so the cast for this one's rather large we're not going to cover all of them because it's so large. Yeah, we'd be here all night. Yeah, it yeah. would take the entire episode just to go through the class. And we're not even, we don't even have the full cast in this one either. So we're just going to cover at least five um, announcements uh, who, of characters that have, I guess, major roles or major speaking roles at least. And we're also going to do one that hasn't been announced yet and uh, just the ADR director and the scriptwriter. Just to condense this and make it easier, but we may throw in a few other names that haven't been announced to be a part of this dub. Um, so, I guess to start off with, let's start with, because I feel like if we go with the big one, it's going to be a big discussion. So why don't we go with ADR director and the script writer first on this one. Alright. So, the ADR director, there's, an, there's a director and then there's an assistant. Um, the ADR director is Joel McDonald. And then the assistant is Afia Yu. 
Oh, it's that little Asian girl with the cupcakes. That's Micah's yes. girlfriend. <laughs> yes. That is Micah's girlfriend. girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Who so, is also one of the girls in the class, I think, too. She's she's someone back in the horde. Yes, she is. She's um Nakamura. Yeah. Part of the horde. Yes. There's so many yes. kids. They're all kind of... So de- many... Like, except for a so couple of them, they're kids. all kind of defined by, like, the one thing they're good at. Because there's, like, the one kid who's good at baseball. Uh, and then there's one who's good at chemistry. Right. And- then there's mm-hmm. Monica Real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't got that far. Yes, um, but anyway, um, I don't have the information for Joel McDonald's ADR work for up in a second. But I do recall that he has um, directed some episodes of like um, Space Dandy. That's one of the bigger ones I've noticed from him recently. He, um, he did a good job. That's on that. for sure. He. Uh, but yeah, he let me see here. I'm trying to. Hardy find. probably is. Hardy's a walking encyclopedia. He might know this more than I can. He was the episode. ADR director for Hagenai Next. I know that. Uh, and uh, oh, he was the ADR director for Level E, or he was one of them. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That helps me because I saw that fairly recently. Yeah. I, I haven't seen that because I'm a horrible person, but just so you know, Vic Mignogna goes batshit crazy with that one. Just saying, it's wonderful. Um, so yeah, he's done definitely done a lot of recent stuff, um, more in the way of comedy by the looks of it. So, I mean, I did like the episodes that he directed for Space Dandy, and Level E again is freaking crazy. It's weird and crazy. So, personally, I think McDonald will do very well with this one. Um, it helps that um, Afia Yu jumps in here, too, to help him out. I mean, because there's, like, ten shows to dub in the next yeah. few months. So, <laughs> and that doesn't even include any of the other ongoing projects. Like, I'm fully aware, that actually, that um, Joe McDonald is currently the director for the One Piece episodes. So yeah, that's a huge endeavor. Looking over his resume, he specializes mainly in comedies. Uh, there's a few, there's right. a few dramas here. He, like he actually, I didn't know this. He directed a lot of episodes of Spice and Wolf. I mean, oh yeah. The first or second season? Do you know? Well, he directed the entire second season, but he did a few episodes of the first one as well. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So yeah, McDonald is definitely suited more for comedies. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah I haven't really seen that Assassinations Classroom has delved into a really big drama part of it like it's had its moments i think uh episode three kind of being the really like big one right with my who i think is you're my favorite character um (laughs) we'll get to him in a minute the the one guy who we're gonna talk about who hasn't said a damn word um (laughs) but i think i have faith in him i know joel a little bit more from his voice work than his directing work um or at least like, I didn't know he was doing Spice and Wolf. That's how much I've paid attention to things. Um, right. Or One Piece. Uh, so I think that him well, he's and doing one, He's Wolf. doing One Piece rather... Well, One Piece is doing it rather recently. And I actually found out um, a couple weeks ago, um, according to Mike McFarland himself on Twitter. This was the same... If you saw the last step episode I talked about when I talked about um, Trafalgar D. Law, um, that same tweet that um, helped me figure out that uh, Law has been cast. Um, he Mike McFarland also said like that he that McDonald was currently dubbing those episodes. So yeah. yeah. And as for what I'm checking, this is actually Afia Yu's first assistant ADR job. I mean, she's the only other time she's ever been a, on a staff is during a commentary in a show she acted in. So mm. it'll definitely be nice. I feel like a lot of the because all three of these shows we're talking about have assistant ADR directors, and I think pretty much all of them are fairly new to this so it's definitely nice to see them getting it uh, it's kind of like a training session almost because right. i mean the directors can't do it alone because of the breakneck pace that they're having to crank them all out because they're doing so right. many dubs all at once one after the other and they're doing it on a weekly schedule unlike uh the, in the past where they can take an entire month to do it so it's, yeah, and there's yeah. some chances where um, you have an actor who's directing. I know that now as of Monday, because they're bringing Kami Samakis 2 in and Joel's Mikage in that, it kind of gives a good balance time for him to go off and do the show and have Afaya kind of take over Assassination's Classroom while he's maybe recording that. 
So I would think that maybe because a lot of these directors are also actors in a lot of the shows, that backup is probably there for when they're doing that if they're in a broadcast show, which I would think would help out. Oh, yeah. What also probably is going to help Joel McDonald out a little bit, um, segue, is the script writer for Assassination Classroom. Because it is the ever-wonderful J. Michael Tatum. The angel on the mic, Stephen Foster on the script. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> that's hard. What? That's harsh. Oh. Damn, that's Hardy. Terrible. He's not that bad, I mean, but he's... I've, I've, but enjo- he's I've generally enjoyed bad. most things Tatum has written. Can he be a little bit ham-handed and a little more outside of an actual teenager's vocal range? Yes, but in some shows it works because how many teenagers are talking about what the hell is going on in this show? Because let me tell you, when I was in high school, I was totally thinking about assassinating some smiley face squid. (laughs) Florida's a weird state, bro. Florida is a weird state, bro. (laughs) But at least, like... Shit happens here. (laughs) At least with, um, like, I, I mean, with Tatum, I, I did enjoy the script for, um, uh, what was it, Attack on Titan. I know that one was a dual effort. Right. Um, but Tatum did write the majority of those episodes. So I did enjoy what he wrote. And so far, I like the direction where this one is going. I mean, I know you picked up on this the other day when we were chatting about it, Hardy, mm-hmm. that they stuck with calling Kuro-sensei Kuro-sensei. Right, instead of unkillable teacher or something like that, which would have just been stupid. Right, like, they stuck with that. That's what Stephen so, Foster would have done. Right. Yeah. And, like, so things like that, I feel like with this pairing, since McDonald is very suited for comedies, and Tatum, who's at this point like written scripts for a mixture of things I feel like this is going to be a good pair and then adding Afia Yu into the mix helping out a bit that's going to be pretty cool as well yeah I think the moment that got me in the writing I think it was I think I said it on Twitter was when they called somebody when they called Koro Sensei a cephalopod like I just completely lost my shit because I was like that's hilarious to me and then there are probably people like no 16 17 year old knows what a cephalopod is yeah yeah, because Tatum has an interesting sense of the English well, Yeah, language. he has a very expansive vocabulary, but then one, one thing oh, you have to remember, this is the E class. These are the dumb kids. Dumb kids. Exactly. I mean, right. so nat- I don't think they would really be using these big multisyllabic well, words. Well, some, some of them might. Some of them might. We've some of them might, because some of them have folk... Right. Some of them have their strengths in some areas and others don't. And some of them don't. Like, for certain characters, it can work. But I think we're, I think we are still as viewers, I think we're only in like episode five or six of the show, depending on what subscription type you have, where we don't really know everybody except for maybe one or two, at least one student very well. Right. Um, so I think that it can work, but I think it, the writing, even if I like Tatum as a writer, because I, I generally tend to, writing isn't the one thing I tend to usually pick up unless it's something I've watched a couple of times where I'm like not looking at the visuals I, I'm a lot more a visual like train my eyes trained to look for visual things not uh, vocal stuff all the time so I haven't noticed it particularly but I think that maybe once it settles down off of obviously this being a broadcast up um, off of that that maybe in the final version we'll see things change too. Right. Yeah, because because kids, how these broadcast dubs work, they only basically dub over the stuff that Japan gives them as the show airs. It's not a final product. Right, and a lot of times they have they have uncensored scenes and they have scenes where the dialogue is actually changed that they have to go back and um, exactly so these reinterpret are not, it for the kids at home. For the kids at home who probably don't understand or are confused, this isn't a final product. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely be talking about that in the last thing we talk about. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lord. Season one, we have things to say. I have things to say because I've seen the Blu ray screen. We're not God. talking season one, though. Shush. But, um, I'm sorry I love the show. Calm down. I know you love the show, but we need to. There are things in the first so- episode of season two that I can be like, God damn it, guys. Megan. Sorry. I know you love Tokyo Ghoul. Stop. <laughs> we'll get to it. Back to Assassination Classroom. Okay, so McDonald. Uh, you and Tatum probably gonna work very well together so far mm-hmm. anyway um, kind of going backwards a little bit in terms of casting um, we're gonna start with Kaya Day 
I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Ki She's one of Kaide. the students in E. Kaide, thank you. Yeah. She's a student from the E class, um, with green hair, and she hasn't done done a lot, but she at least has a decent um, speaking role as of now. So that's why I kind of wanted to include her. Mm -hmm. So. Personally, I had no predictions at all, really, for Assassination Classroom, because I didn't have time to make them. So, I'm going to ask you, did you guys have any predictions for Kaida? I didn't even know she was a thing that existed yet. She's part of the oh, Horde. She, yeah. She's part of the Horde. Right. The Horde of Children. It's like, what? That's a character? Oh. <laughs> she, uh, that's, why I ref that's why I refer to her as the girl with the green exactly. hair. Exactly. I think she's also, exactly. isn't she the girl who names Koro-sensei, though? She is. She is. Okay, so yeah, that's her claim to fame. She's the one who named our... Cephalopody and Smiley, Walmart Smiley face. Yeah. Now, she gets a bigger <laughs> role in a future episode, but uh, but we haven't got to that yet. We're not there yet. Right. Right. So, did you guys have predictions on who it might be? No, not a shot in hell. No, oh. not even close. Okay. So, then let's skip to who actually got it. It's Monica Rial. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> Daily, um, daily horde drinking game. Is Monica in this show? And how many of them is she? <laughs> it could be Nagimo where she was like four different people. Right. Um, and you could actually tell she was trying because she had four different voices. Mm -hmm. But now now that I've seen her, seen the character, the lowly with the green hair. Oh, yeah, that's totally Monica. Yeah. I mean, there's no that's question. That's totally Monica. It works. It works. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's all we have to say for it that It really one. is. Um. Yeah. Really. Because there's not a lot... Um, at least as far as I've seen, there's not a lot that the character's done, aside of talking a little bit in Shining for Kagisa. Mm -hmm. um, so, there's not much to talk about here, outside of she has a major speaking role, and it's Monica Real, and it works. Because right. <laughs> it's Monica, yeah. and it's... Tis, yeah. Mon tis Monica. Yes. It, it pretty much. So, why don't we move on to... Um, let's move on to Karma Akabane. Okay. Yes! Karma Akabane. Um... This Who one we did that? have predictions yeah, I... for. We did have predictions for this one. But as far as I know, as far as we know from the broadcast dub, he hasn't come up yet. He kind of comes up for like five seconds at the end of the second episode, but then really is introduced in the third episode. Right. But he was announced in this dub announcement for Assassination Classroom. Mm -hmm. So, ta-da, we're going to talk about him. So, what were your predictions for Karma? Habercorn. Uh, Megan, while we... <laughs> Oh god, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Party Todd. <laughs> Todd. I was the one who didn't have Todd, but um if you if you Todd, know me then Todd you, Habercorn no. would have been a fun choice, I will admit that. If you know me, you know who I wanted. Of course. <laughs> you we wanted, wanted like a solo on. thought on him. Because I love Because I love him in everything he does. I'm a horror I know it's like I'm like you could put him in anything and I would be like, I will watch the shit out of this show. But uh, yeah, um, I actually like who, like, I don't mind who they casted, but... Right, because the person who they cast Karma as is Austin Tyndall, which, admittedly, I'm a little iffy with. Well, uh, for more reasons than Yeah. I, I'm okay with him, but then again, I was apparently the smart person who avoided the one show that he was in that was so horrible. Yeah. I apparently dodged that bullet. Because, <laughs> Hardy, have you seen Guilty Crown? I, I have, um... I'm one of the few uh, people. I'm one I'm of the few people who actually kind of likes parts of it. I I enjoyed I enjoyed the first half, and I mm -hmm. kind of liked the ending. It was that part right in the middle that was just. Yeah, it was a good amount of it. Yeesh. And for Austin Tindall, because he plays the main character Shu, honestly, it was one of it was not the best thing. It was the, well, one of the weakest performances I saw from that dub, which is why this made me so hesitant. I, I don't have the raging hate boner for Austin Tindall like a lot of people do. Well, I, I don't have I don't have a hate I don't have a hate boner. I mean, because this because Guilty Crown was the first thing I saw him do. Yeah, he is good when he has to get crazy. Like uh, right. Accelerator was another role a lot of people had problems with for him because they said, oh, Accelerator, Accelerator is a absolutely nutballs. And they're like, oh, he doesn't he doesn't sound like he's feeling anything, or he sounds like he doesn't want to be there. But when you hear Austin Tyndall actually go into crazy mode, he makes an impact. And that's why he was good as Accelerator in the later episodes that he's in. And he was good in, he's decent in Bento from what I've watched. And, uh, and is this a zombie? And I think and I think he can, um, I think he'll be okay as Karma, because Karma is another one of those characters who's just 
kind of on the crazy side. I love karma. I, I, I love I, karma too. It's going to be, for me, it's going to be interesting because um, he was recently announced as the main male character for Defrag as well. So, which is going to be different for me because it'll be, because um, obviously Defrag is a comedy. Yeah. I have not seen him do a comedy. So it'll be a different side for me to see of him. Right. Um, but as of right now, we haven't heard him. And we don't know what it sounds like. My thing with them is he always sounds like he's has, he has bread in his mouth. <laughs> Get the bread out of your mouth. He's like, oh, um, <laughs> like for me, even like, like for me, I'm I'm really I'm kind of excited because the one thing that uh, I'm not as familiar, I'm not a huge uh, Index fan, and I I didn't watch Guilty Crown. I haven't so, seen Index either. So so, don't so of course the only thing I really know Austin Tindall from is his lovely ten episode stint before he gets cut in half um, in Attack on Titan as Marco. So oh. I know him as Marco, who is like the nicest, sweetest human being on the planet. And so, of course, he has to die. Of course. Perfect cinnamon bun to appear works. for this world. Yeah. And he also exists <laughs> for us to make Marco Polo jokes at Mark Mc- Mike McFarlane for the rest of the whole time. Um, <laughs> yes! Basically, that's all. That. That's why he exists. Um, but I liked him as that, so I, I think that like there is some parts of karma where you can you see a little, like, I really want to see how he does it. Because I remember in the Japanese, even the guy who plays in the Japanese isn't really, like, it's, he's not really known for doing characters like Karma, or at least from what I've seen. I've seen him do characters like Rin from Blue Exorcist, and he was also Nishioi and Haikyuu, so the first, the first thing that pops in my head when I see Karma and I hear his voice, I'm like, aren't you supposed to be, like, the ultimate tap everybody on the ass and make them feel better guy? Um, and then he godfathers an octopus to the desk. Um, so I'm excited to hear him. It, it's definitely going to be interesting to see even those, like, last minute of the next episode that'll come out um, next, in the coming week. That'll be interesting to see even, like, the direction that it might be headed. And when he does finally come in, it's going to be rather interesting. interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so, next is uh, going to be Karasuma. Karasuma. Who is the, uh, Karasuma. Thank you. Names! Haha. <laughs> 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 Um, he is, is the government official who initially brings Koro Sensei into the E class, and then he actually becomes the PE teacher. Again, I didn't make any predictions on anything. So. Uh, I totally forgot he was in the first episode. I, I did have some predictions. I wanted Sabbath. And you wanted Sabbath? I wanted Sabbath. It be- looked like it could have been a good Sabbath. Yeah, role. he would have been a good Sabbath. But, you know, I also thought, he hey, maybe been. Robert McCollum could do it. And, or maybe even Ian Sinclair could pull it off. And I was kind of, kind of not really disappointed it wasn't one of those guys, but just kind of taken aback by who they actually cast, because I've never heard of the guy. Me neither. Have, Megan, have no, you No. I, I, like I said, I forgot he was in the first episode at all. Okay. <laughs> I totally forgot. I was like... Oh wait, this guy's in this episode. Oh yeah, I forgot he has not to sure how you the plot. Forget, not sure how you could forget that. But anyway, the person who was announced to play this character, I'm not even going to try with names, um, his name is Chris Ryan. I've never heard of this human being before in my life. Yeah. Same here. He only has so... three roles to his name so far, and this is his first major role. He was in a... Uh, he was actually in... He was an unnamed role in One Piece, and he was like a minor character in Fairy Tale. So this is pro- this is his big break. That makes sense. This this definitely would be a big one for him. And so far, we've only seen very little. And I think I don't know. Like we haven't seen that much. I'll have to listen to more as the show goes on before I could really make a judgment. Right. I I was kind of underwhelmed by him, especially because Karasuma. Yeah, this, that's that's what I'm feeling too. He's this big manly guy when you you really expect this baritone voice and. And Ryan's voice just wasn't deep, in, in my opinion. But I know I don't know. It, I, it's I'll just I can't really make a. It was one of the more forgettable ones from the first episode, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, but probably because I've never really heard that voice before. Right. So it was. I guess it was just because I'm again. I'm also unfamiliar with him. I really don't watch a lot of uh, One Piece or Fairy Tale. Uh, so yeah, I didn't like, even know that he did both of them, and I don't even know which characters they are, so that doesn't help me much. I, I mean, like, I, I want to see if he gets a little bit maybe deeper how he takes the character, because he doesn't really show up again until episode four, if I'm right. 
yeah, he doesn't show up again until like episode four. Maybe it's like in passing in the other two. Actually, I think you see him at the end of episode two with Karma. Uh, yeah, he's 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 peppered in through the show through the few episodes that right. he's. And then he kind of starts. And then he in comes full in. Time in four. Yeah, and then he becomes more of a full fledged character. Right. Once he becomes a PE teacher. So um, I think once we get to that episode, it'll be a little bit easier to maybe judge him, especially when we see him bouncing off of. Because in the first episode, all he really does is he kind of bounces off Koro Sensei a little bit, but he's also a huge exposition dump. Mm-hmm. Right. He's basically like, so, here's the plot of this show. Bye, kids! Yeah. Have fun! Like, so this, <laughs> is, fun killing, this is this nine-foot-tall yellow octopus. We want you to kill it. Bye. You know. <laughs> also, it won't kill you. Yes. It just sits there and Except smiles for, yeah, at you like a tie-dyed t-shirt. Except for at the end of the episode. <laughs> fuck him up, Koro Sensei. Okay, don't fuck him up that much! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! We'll get to that. We'll get to Koro Sensei in a minute. Oh, yeah. Fuck um, him up! Fuck him up! No, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I guess the consensus here is we have to see more to see how Chris Ryan handles this because we've never heard of him. Before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're sorry! <laughs> so, the next is uh, Nagisa. Mm-hmm. Who is basically the other, I would think, the other major character alongside Koto Sensei. Right. The little um, boy girl. So. Or the little girl the, boy. The boy girl. Yeah. The one who is clearly it's a trap. marked in a different uniform as to know that he is the main character. Yes. <laughs> like, everyone else kind of wears a relatively the same uniform. There's the blue kid. Yeah. I wonder <laughs> who the lead is, guys. Yes. So, I think I actually had a prediction on this one. Mm-hmm. Well, more because I enjoy this person's work. I actually predicted Josh Grayling. <laughs> not Same. You know, I'm going to say I, I have to disagree with that because I think Nagisa needed a female actress. Yeah, like... Because he's no, so... Like he looks so effeminate. Cast, yeah. It's... it's. I, I think right. he needed a female actor to really sort of set him in trap status to where he's... You don't really know exactly what he... He's very androgynous. And so I, I'm I glad that they... Almost, you at least... Yeah. I think you at least gotta always. admit, though... Because um, Greeley did do Kuronosuke from Princess Jellyfish. Oh, yeah. And he can kind of pull it off, but definitely a female voice would definitely make this character look better. Right. That's for and sure. And so when I was coming up with a prediction of who I'd like to see play him, I was, my first prediction was Brina Palencia. That would that would have been my female one. That's the go-to. One. Yeah. That's the go-to right there. Yeah. And, and Time to cheap out and jump on the Brina train. Yeah. And if... <laughs> Choo-choo! And I think other Choo-choo! actresses could have done him as well. I think Caitlin Glass could yeah, have definitely. could have possibly done him. And, and Terry Doty probably could have. Terry Doty right. is better at voicing little boys than she is voicing actual women, in my opinion. That sounded really wrong in my opinion. Yeah, I know it sounds well, wrong, she, but I mean... She did do... um. She did do Laughing Under the Clouds last season, and the role was the youngest um, brother. Right. And because I because I only saw one episode. Yeah. I, didn't I really think she was good as Chutaro, and I only saw like half the episode, and it didn't really strike a chord with me. But I think Terry Terry is really good as Chutaro. She was really good in Level E as the right. Dawn XP oh, yeah. or whatever his name was. So. Whichever his name was, whichever one she was. Yeah. Instead. We, instead of Brina, instead of Josh, instead of Terry, we have Lindsay Seidel. Mm-hmm. None of us saw that coming. No. None of us saw that coming. <laughs> but now that I have a chance to listen to it, I'm I'm starting to realize more and more how vast her range is. Yeah. Because she can Definitely. do pretty much anything. We've seen her do, we've seen her do the deep, sultry voice in Psychopaths. We've seen her do the really high-pitched, girly mm-hmm. voice in uh, in shows like in. Uh, what else was she? She was in like the first opening minutes of Dead Man Wonderland, where she was the perky girl. We've seen her do like what? crazy psycho in um, Is This a Zombie? And she's just, she's all over the place in range. And I'm. She, she's like a chameleon voice acting chameleon. Really? Yeah. That's the thing I'm. That's what I feel like. Because it, it, it's, um, it's something I've referred to recently for um, Ian Sinclair. Oh God. Ian Sinclair is a voice acting chameleon, and Lindsay Seidel is definitely like a voice acting chameleon. Troy Baker does a lot of that too, to where he can. can oh yeah, Troy Baker. Carnival taught me Ian Sinclair does black voice actor magic. Um, <laughs> did not think he was gonna be here at all. I was like, oh, that's him. No, it's not. What the hell? But no, I really yeah. like. I like her as Nagisa. Like mm-hmm. I, I do like it. I thought it was gonna be like, I again. I've I've watched some stuff with her in it, but this is kind of like. So once I heard her as Nagisa, I had put her in a prediction of another show that we're talking about, and she's not that character. Um, 
but I really want to see her do more of Nagisa. I really do. I, like, want to watch her go through him. Because Nagisa is the one character we really follow a lot, and I like his story, and I want to see her perform it. Mm -hmm. Right. I thought it was going to be too girly, but then when I saw the first episode, I was like, this works. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. Keep going. Do that. Please okay. keep going. <laughs> so, before we get to the big enchilada, um, why don't we talk about a character that has not been announced yet? Bitch Sensei! Let's talk about... The yes, let's talk about I let's talk about Irina because at this point she has not been announced, um, and probably won't come up until later because she's in like she comes in episode five I think. Yes. Um. So who do we want to see as bitch sensei? I actually wanted to see Jamie Markey. A lot of I'm people do. However, a lot of people. I want Jamie Markey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. However, it's not gonna happen because she's already something else. Yeah, she's uh, in another show. Right. She's one of the students, I think. So that's oh, yeah, not happening. So now my prediction's out the window. But what do you guys think? Thanks, show. Oh God, now I'm like, now I, now I'm stumped. Well, I would have put Jamie on her. I personally would like to hear someone like Lydia Mackey, and yeah, because she does a lot of those, you know, sultry, deep vo roles. And I personally want her to actually use a Russian accent, like a slight one. Some sort of accent. Yeah, there. because Irina you is have Russian. To give her that foreign. Yeah. yeah. To give her that foreign. Yes. I, I see what yeah, you're that saying. femme that fatale nice. sort of sound to her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lydia Mackey would do it. Colleen could do it. I don't know if Colleen would do it that great, considering that. Forget that. No, Colleen could probably do it. I mean, just Stephanie Young. There's a cavalcade of people. Yeah. I was just thinking in my head, what about Stephanie Young? Yeah. I think Ooh. Stephanie's voice is a bit too deep for the character. A little too deep. Yeah. But like. She could work with it a little bit mm. if it was her. Yeah, yeah. But personally, I would like depends. to. I would like to see Lydia Mackey. Yeah, same. Lydia Mackey would probably be a good choice. Okay, I agree. That was five. That was five seconds of talking about bitch that's eight. Okay, um, so. giant cephalopod enchilada. <laughs> the big, the big Kahuna. We gotta talk about Kuro Sensei. Yes. First and foremost, did anyone have any predictions for Kuro Sensei? Because I sure as hell did not. Not a shot in hell. Oh, I did. I was thinking it was the hardest one to predict. And Megan, it is the hardest. Megan is gonna kill me with who I. I'm not gonna kill you because I actually I saw your tweet and I was like, eh, I can get on board with this. Yeah. I wanted to. I, I haven't I haven't heard about this. So. I wanted to hear Vic Mignogna as Koro Sensei. I was like, just what? Like, I'll let it be okay. Yes, because he could be in this. He couldn't touch Tokyo Ghoul with thinking a ten foot pole. Think, thinking, thinking about it, considering like some of the crazier mm -hmm. things he's done. Yeah. I feel like it would have been interesting to see that because I mean I have seen level E. I rewatched Rosafon recently. Mm -hmm. I've so, seen ghost stories. Right. I've and seen Oron, his shit. Oron's a pretty decent, hilarious. Yeah. Oron's a pretty decent, hilarious role. Yeah. So it would have been amusing to see him as Kuro Sensei. Yeah. But I, I, admit that. I was going over who else could possibly play him. I was just drawing blanks other than someone like someone like Vic Mignogna. I was like maybe Ian Sinclair is goofy enough to play him. Um, I was thinking I'd, honestly, that too. Like, uh, yeah, so. I think. And then, b before you announce it, I one of my t uh, friends on Twitter, Katie, she said, you know, oh, it's this, it's going to be this actor. I'm like, how can you? T oh, she's like, trust me, it's going to be this actor. And Katie then, is a savant. Lo and behold, <laughs> it's Sunny Strait. Yes, it is Sunny Strait who's playing Kodo Sensei, and I think it is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, like I was like, whole like. The clip they put online, I was a little, I was like, I can dig this, but I'm still a little bit apprehensive. Yeah. And then right, you watched then him when go you for a half hour, and you were like, okay, next Wednesday, please, now? Yeah. No, when I um, yeah. when I first watched the clip on YouTube, I typed in, you know, you know, I like Sonny Strait a lot, but from that particular clip, I think he played it too straight. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> but uh, I like, you know, Koro Sensei, I, I know Sonny can do really goofy, crazy voices, and I think he's holding back in this clip. And Sonny Strait himself actually responded to the to my comment and said, "Oh, that's because even the Japanese guy was playing it straight. It's the whole thing is Koro Sensei is supposed to remain calm and just play this entire scenario straight while all the kids are trying to shoot and kill him. So he's like, "Don't worry, I get crazier in the episode." And then the episode actually comes <laughs> and out, does. and he was not lying. So <laughs> it was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> like. That whole part at the end where, like, no, Kuro Sensei, no, 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 no. <laughs> Bad, no. It's like, don't hurt them. They're just kids. 
Fuck him up, fuck him up. Don't fuck him up that much. <laughs> so yeah, I think we're all in agreement that this works. <laughs> and it works wonderfully. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say for the performance, yeah, like, yeah, Jun Fukuyama really does kind of play it straight. Mm -hmm. And it yeah, is, for me, watching it in both languages is really funny because you have Sunny Strait who can do all the crazy stuff and then you have Jun Fukuyama who I know is doing all serious shit. Um, but I love watching him do it. It's just like having the best teacher ever. Yeah. Who is also flying at like Mach 20 and Who is a nine foot tall <laughs> yellow octopus. That has, that stole Walmart's trademark. <laughs> <laughs> and I can imagine it's only going to get even more crazy considering the scenarios that do come up that we've seen go so far. <laughs> I think it's episode three, like still episode three is my favorite just because of all the, the way he takes that karma. Like I can't wait to hear oh, that. Oh lord. I, oh great. lord, I cannot wait for that episode. <laughs> Like, really, I guess really quickly, a few other um, voice actors who have been announced in this. Um, just really quick. Jerry Jewell, like we said before, Jamie Markey has been announced. Uh, Joel McDonald is also in the dub. Afia Yu, uh, Leah Clark, Terry Doty, Morgan Garrett, Clifford Chapin. There's definitely a good amount of people. A lot of these are names. There's that, Marcus Stimmick. There's a lot of these names that I've never seen before. I think when Jerry Jewell spoke, I think I posted on Twitter. Oh, hi, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> no, Marcus Stimmick is a is a recently new voice actor who's coming up, and the first time I heard him was in a Magical Index Two, and he sounds like a drunk Harrison Ford. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Even oh when he's talking, he, he did a commentary for Magic for Index, and he's he sounds like a drunk. He's like he sounds like he's wasted. He's like, do you know this is Marcus Stimmick? And he, when he says he says his name like it's drunk, his name sounds like something you'd say when you're a drunk. Like, what's your name, sir? Like, Marcus Stemmick. I'm Marcus Stemmick. <laughs> yeah, but I'm very happy that a good amount of these roles are filled by new people. Exactly. It, ma it makes me very happy because it's a large cast, and it's like, you can't just place a whole crap ton of veterans in there. Well, I mean, that's just not possible. More than any other dubbing. Well, it's possible, but. Yeah, more than any other dubbing company in America, Funimation is the one that's accused most of of copy and pasting their uh, their dub casts and and so I see this sort of as a good way to get away from that stigma by casting oh, a lot definitely. of new the only problem with casting a lot of new people is that some of them aren't very good yet so learning curve exists yeah. right we'll just have to learning see how curve. everything goes right. and I mean I mean it's definitely a good learning curve considering this is a broadcast dub and it's not a final product exactly this is definitely something good at the very least um so I think at this point we've covered Assassination Classroom plenty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you covered um, your ass class, I guess. <laughs> You're the one who doesn't know. Better. I'm sorry. I, you know. <laughs> so let's move on to Death Parade. That's the um, second show that they have in that um, Wednesday lineup. You mean the show you don't watch it for in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. Let me just say, best um, intro of the season. So ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yes. of the season. Up there, up there for me at least is be one of the best. Intro I just can't stop watching it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Joel McDonald, go back to Assassination Class for like five seconds. Joel McDonald is lobbying for the cast to do that opening dance. Just spin, spin Sunny straight around for a minute and a half. We got this shit, guys. <laughs> yes. He responded to me on Twitter about that, and it was. I, was I like, think I, yes. I think I also and noted, who do I have to pay for this? <laughs> yes. And then like at least five other voice actors in the dub, they're like. I only do the electric slide, or this isn't even in my contract and stuff like that. Guess so what's gotta be in your contract! Anyway, aside from that, uh, Death Parade. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And now on to um, something completely different. Completely different. Oh my god. This that is could be, can that different. be like a description of the opening, and now for something completely different? Yes. The opening that does not match the show <laughs> at all, but it's so oh, awesome you no. don't care. So basically the idea of this show, for those who may not know what it is, um... Basically, you're in this uh, bar place thing, and you have to um, play games uh, for your life, right. quote unquote. Yeah, it's always two versus. It's al always one versus one. There's always two people. It's always it's always in pairs. They always bring them in, in pairs. But what they don't know is that um, these people have actually already died, and these games are held um, to decide who's going to be reincarnated or who's going into the void, or in other words, heaven and hell. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the object of the game is not necessarily to win; it's to see who freaks out the most. So it's to find. It's basically the horrible person determination. Exactly. Game. Yes. Right. And Pretty Jesus much. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so, for Death Parade. 
this announcement was rather small, um, but it particularly, but it mostly pertained to um, characters from the first episode, and I think one additional one that we haven't heard yet. Um, so I guess we're kind of just gonna cover them mostly, mostly the major characters, um, the minor ones maybe for like five seconds. But um, anyway, ADR director, assistant ADR director, and scriptwriter. So the ADR director is Zach Bolton, and the assistant ADR director is Chris George. Zach Bolton has done quite a bit of things. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, some of them good, like his... some of them... Some of them <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do love what he did with Psycho Pass, because he did do Psycho Pass. Yes, he did Psycho Pass. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Oh, okay, um, I'm looking at things he's done now. And uh-huh. I think he directed some of the episodes of Space Dandy as well, if I recall. Yeah, he's done, he's done a few of them. He did eight yeah, episodes did in season one, seven episodes in season two. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm correct. Good. <laughs> um, so, but his work is kind of hit or miss, depending on what it is. Um, but... He's done a hit so far in this. Yeah. So far. <laughs> like, so far. And one episode down! Yeah! <laughs> Nothing can stop me now! <laughs> and Chris George, I've actually never heard of him before. Let me take a look. So he's new to me. Um, though I bet our resident encyclopedia named Hardy will be able to figure this out. Um, Hardypedia. Yeah. He's over there mainly behind the scenes kind of guy. Um, that, I think that's what I saw too. Like I've yeah. never seen him. He's like, more of an he's more of an engineer and not really a director. I think Death Parade is actually his first ADR assistant directing job. So he's also he's also been background care a lot of unnamed background characters. Uh, his only real major role he was Ugo in Jormungand, if you've seen that. And uh, I need to see that. He was like one of the main characters, not a main character, but he was on one of the squad members of Apple Seed Thirteen. So he's not really a well known name. He's a behind the scenes guy mainly. Which makes sense as to why nobody, none of us have ever really heard yeah. him before. Sorry. Um, it's okay, I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and as for the script writer, uh, it's Bonnie Clunkenbeard. Not to be confused with Colleen. Are they related, though? I don't know. Yes, they, yeah, they are. Bonnie's the okay. older sister. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's good to know, because I do know there, it, Bonnie at least exists. It's not Colleen under a, uh, a su- student. I thought it was Colleen under a no, student. No, I, 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 look, I looked this up when I was like doing a little bit of prep work before this. So, Bonnie is a separate entity. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's done quite a few script writing credits, right. as I recall. The difference between her and someone like Tatum when it comes to a script is she usually sticks to... She doesn't like changing, make, making wild changes or, or alterations and, and doctoring the mm-hmm. script up. It's, it's very... What you see is what yeah, you get. Yeah, much more faithful to what right. the Japanese exactly. version is. Which not always is a good thing. That's not always a good thing. You know, Sentai yeah. Filmworks has taught us that. So, but the- Right. <laughs> and there are some things that there's uh, there's cultural divides that maybe they'll understand something one right. way, and it's not something you can exactly translate yeah. into English and get Because Japanese is a weird language. Yeah. yeah. I think for the case of Death Parade, being a bit more faithful to the original Japanese is probably what's going to work here. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Considering the content and the direction that the show is going in. Yeah, the whole tone of the show, a more really. More faithful adaptation. Uh, yeah, a more faithful adaptation is probably going to yeah. work a lot better. Especially for how heavy the first episode gets. Mm. Oh, Lord. Yeah, dear. Not just the first episode, the second one. Oh, my oh, God. Just like the first. That's the one thing is that only the first two episodes really kind of connect. Right. Character Those, and story wise. Everything mm. else is kind of like building. There is a plot. Mm. But you don't see the same people, except for obviously like Dekio and his right. beautiful eyes. Um, I lo- <laughs> we'll I'm get, sorry. I'm sorry. We'll I get love, to Dekio. We'll, we'll get, get to Dekio. Calm down. The it's all okay. the characters are pretty eyes. Um, so probably so. So I guess we're in consensus that with Bolton it's going to be really iffy, but with Bonnie it, it's probably going to be at least a faithful adaptation, right. which is going to be good. Uh, th- then again, this is only the first episode, so. Right, so we can only judge so much as, like, a first impression. Mm-hmm. Um, so for five seconds, uh, let's talk about the two contestants that we get in the first episode, Takashi and Machiko. Yeah. Obviously, no one would have predictions for them because no one would really predict any of these one-off characters. Exactly. So um, 
Takashi is played by Eric Vale, mm-hmm. and Machiko is played by Trina Nishimura. Mm-hmm. Eric, I but, was sick for half my recording session. Uh, you Vail. know when he said that, I I saw the near the end of the episode where Takashi starts like bl- like oozing from his nose and his mouth like he's just <laughs> perfect timing. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Like I know, I'm just like, dude, you were a trooper <laughs> for getting through that. It, it probably actually affected his performance near there because it looked right. like he was just about to vomit or something. At the character, I, I mean. So. I, know. I bet you Eric was also probably wanting to vomit. Like, during <laughs> <that time. laughs> Not as a boof. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um. So yeah, I guess we can agree that Eric Vale did really, really well as Takashi. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, I mean, uh, I like Trina. I like Trina as Machiko too, because I've never really, you don't really get to see Trina as like a thirty-something-year-old, like a twenty, twenty to thirty-something-year-old vindictive psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> like I really started noticing her with Attack on Titan. Obviously, I haven't really heard her in anything else. So this is definitely something different for me to hear her do. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if I enjoyed it. It was definitely different, though. Yeah, I, I was kind of iffy about it, too. It's like, I don't I don't feel like the voice really matched the character's face all that well. I mean, the performance right, was good. I had that feeling. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just... It was a good performance, was... but it just didn't line up. Yeah. Like, yeah, like it, it seemed like she was a little bit, like... She sounded, like, maybe my age compared yeah. to how old Machi might really be. Mm-hmm. Right. She has a little bit... It, she sounded a little more youthful for someone who is... Married and pregnant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Pregnant with, I don't know, <laughs> someone's a kid. T- some Somebody. Somebody. Eh. Eh. <laughs> but because... Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> but I you will are say the father. The father. That's, isn't that Maury, though? That's Maury, Jerry? yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, whatever. Maury, Maury. <laughs> but anyway... anyway. Because, for me, Eric Vale is the only voice actor I fangirl over because I have the hugest freaking crush on Sanji that is... Mm, I definitely, like, freaked out and had a lot of fun with this one for him. <laughs> I was like, yes! <laughs> and, um, we're, we're gonna... We're gonna we're gonna get into an even bigger one later, so... <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, with Eric Vale, um, I mean, if you have a douchebag, like, a really unsavory character, that's who you call. And then there's Yuki Soma. Yeah. <laughs> and then Yuki Soma. So much. Pretty much. Yeah. But, um, okay. That was the quick five second recap of those two characters. Mm-hmm. So, um, working a little bit backwards in the rest of the announcements, um, we have Clovis, who's basically the doorman. I love Clovis! Um, did anyone have predictions for this? We actually have not heard this character yet, by the way. No, oh, no we, he, he was of, in there. He's not in the show, really! Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he was in the, ep- like, the next episode preview, but we he's didn't in the really be- hear him. He's in the beginning of the next episode for like yeah. five seconds, and then he doesn't show up again to like episode five. Yeah. Right, so we haven't heard him. Mm-hmm. We have seen him at like the end of the first episode and like the next episode preview. We have not heard him. He's so cute. Yeah. No, I was going to tell you who I predicted, and Megan's going to fangirl. I wanted to hear Solo Sob. Did- Damn it! I knew you were going to say that now. <laughs> ironically that enough, so, so great. Ironic- I know, ironically enough, that's who I predicted. I predicted Solo I didn't have any predictions because I was so behind when the cast announcement came out. That, that was me with Assassination Classroom, so. But yeah, Solasad definitely would have been a, a fun and good fit for this one. <laughs> I love Clovis so much, even though he didn't say much. <laughs> oh my, uh, my favorite thing is if you watch the opening really quickly, when they're all swinging, he falls off his rope. <laughs> oh, I never noticed that. I never noticed that, that either. Time. Someone pointed that one out to me, and I was like, oh, look at him go! <laughs> I'll have to look that, at that <laughs> next time. Um, yeah, it's anyway. like, towards the very beginning. But uh, okay. I'm... <laughs> I didn't have any predictions because, again, I was really behind. Okay, so Hardy and I were pegging Solasa. Megan had no one. But we were all wrong. Whoop, um, whoop. <laughs> it's actually Zach Bolton who's taking this one on. Zach Bolton, filler of roles. No, I, so, I don't really have don't know how to feel. an opinion on Zach Bolton because he doesn't really. He does a lot of acting, but it's all like background jobs. Yeah. Right. Like the Some only role, role filler. the only somewhat major role that I know him from, even though I did not finish rewatching the series in English because I kind of refused to, was the second season of Psychopaths. Yeah, that was the only one that I really noticed. Was like what? Because <laughs> I thought that was gonna be someone else entirely, but then I was like, huh? So what? I, I don't know much in terms of his voice acting work, so I don't know how this one's gonna go, honestly. And honestly, Clovis just kind of shows up and looks pretty and hits buttons. Right. 
I don't think it's really good to write him off yet because we haven't True. heard much of Clavin. I mean, we don't know how good of an actor... We don't know how good of an actor Bolton really is because yeah. he's in so little. Right. I mean, you take someone like Justin Cook, who True. stays almost constantly behind the scenes. And Justin Cook is a fantastic actor. Oh, God. Fruits Basket taught me that. Yeah, or Yu Yu Hakusho. Show. Yeah. Right. I was, I was a little young for yeah. Yu Yu Hakusho. That's why, for me, like, I'm not writing um, Bolton off with it quite yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how it's going to sound. Because I never pictured that it would go in this direction. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I definitely have to hear it in order to, like, hear it at least more than five seconds, seconds. in order to, like, really judge it. Right. But, yeah, because, again, this is a character that kind of just has poked his head in. Hey, guys, I'm here. Bye-bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping, he, I'm hoping he actually does something in other episodes. Uh, he ca- I, I, he's popped up at least a decent amount of time so far. And he's in the opening, um, so he has to be. A- right. Apparently. <laughs> Um, so next, uh, next character was announced was Quinn. I don't even remember who this character is. Quinn was oh, just she, recently she in the episode that came out just yesterday. yesterday. Which is probably why I don't know her, because I'll probably be watching it in the next week. If you, <laughs> Apparently she's a drunk. Yeah, she's a drunk. Oh, she wonderful. was the one who was juggling the wine bottles in the opening with the patch eye. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know who you're, I know who you're talking about now. So since I don't really know this character... Um, I had no prediction for it. Um, I don't know if you guys did. Either. I didn't even know that per. I didn't even know like again because she didn't come in until this like last right. week. I was like, who the hell is this? I girl? will tell you this. I'll tell you this. I didn't know who it was until I watched this episode recently, and the moment I saw the character, I'm like, that's going to be Anastasia Munoz. I knew it. Which is, which is yes, who is going to be? Playing. And, and I'm like, ding, ding, and ding. you're like, yeah. If you have a girl in an anime who with that face. With that hairstyle, nine times out of ten, it's Anastasia Munoz. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with her work. Yeah. I, she did Jormungand, correct me if I'm She was Jormungand, yes. Jorman, Jorman yes. Yeah, I still need to see that show, yeah. but I do remember seeing her name in the cast announcement. Mm-hmm. So she's one that's I'm very unfamiliar with as well, so it'll be interesting for me to see that. She's actually done um, a lot, a lot of work. Um, let's see. I'm trying to get on something so that I can see. If you list me some, I'll probably feel like it. Have you uh, <laughs> have you watched Sacred Ma- Blacksmith? No. Okay, you've watched I, Carnival, right? I, yes, uh, sh- yes. She was Mine. I need to watch oh, that. Oh, wasn't she the the villain in the very beginning? That was. Is that Mine? Oh God, I just finished watching this. Let's see. Show. I need to I need to rewatch it. It's funny. Uh, you know who she was? But, um, I... She was the the dragon dude's wife in Kamisama Kiss. Oh! Dude's okay, oh. now I remember her. Her. Yeah. yeah. Her. Oh. The, the one, um, shoot. The one who made, um, she was the one who made Tomoe Little, right? No, 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 no. No, that was Lydia no, McKay. I'm, um, I'm thinking someone no, else. She's, no, she's the <laughs> one where, um, they go back in time They to go get underwater. Robert McCollum's eye back. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was Robert McCollum's right, eye. Right, right. And um, oh, right. her thing gets yes, swept yes, yes. away, and Mizuki is a bro and goes and gets it back. Right, okay. Mm. Now I remember. Because it's been a year yeah, since she I was the, the one who uh, her husband insults her at work, and she gets pissed and, like, kicks it. Okay. I gotta rewatch the first season again. Mm. So my my box set is sitting on my desk, glaring at me. I need to be quiet. Okay, but anyway. So, from what you. From what you've gathered, and since it's the recent episode, because I haven't seen the recent episode, you think it's a really good fit. I think, her. yeah. The instant I saw it, I'm like, that's going to be Anastasia Munoz. So yeah, and and just uh, and with Quinn as a character, from what I was able to ascertain, I think yes, that her voice is really going to match up well. So. Yay! Yay! Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's move on to Nona. I love who, Nona. Who's basically? I guess you can call her the manager manager of this whole thing. Sh- shenanigans, basically. Nona, Nona, I, Nona, gear shit. I rule this bar. I love Pretty Nona. much. Um, I had no prediction for Nona. Um, Why do I want to say Wait, I no, had... did I have Nona? Oh, no, I had two, actually. I am wrong. I'm looking at the wrong list. I had two. Mm-hmm. I thought it was either going to be Trina Nishimura. That's who I had. Or Brina Palencia. But I was thinking it was going to be all wrong. My Nishimura. prediction was actually kind of a long shot. I was thinking of who I wanted to play the role. And because uh, I didn't, I was afraid it was going to go to like Monica because she does those types of roles all the time. 
and yeah, I, I didn't want to th- peg Monica yeah. as it. And so who I wanted was Carrie Savage, but she's, she is very, she's not regular very much anymore, but because she's most, some most of the time she's sick and most of the time she lives in California. So, but Savage would have been a good pick. But yeah, I wanted, I I knew it was going to be a long shot and I doubt it was going to be her. And if it was a broadcast dub, which it did turn out to be, uh, I knew it wouldn't be her because she does most of her stuff in California. But, uh, but that's who I wanted to see as Nona. So the person who's actually going to be Nona is um, Jade Saxton. Mm-hmm. And based on, like, we've only heard her for, for like, five seconds mm-hmm. um, at the end of the first episode. I think it works. I was I kind of I was kind of hesitant at first when they announced mm-hmm. it. I was I'm too. like, you know, I could hear it, but I don't, I'm not really sold on it. Then I actually heard how she played the role. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, she can do yeah, it. Yeah, it's her. Yeah. yeah, she can do it. Because the only thing, the only thing that I remember as of recent that I've heard her do was Wolf Children. Right. So unless there's some other one that I'm forgetting off the top of my head. It, but, it, um, why do I want to say she's one of the? She's the other Wisp with Josh Greeley and. Cotton she is. She That's, is. I'm yeah. A, I'm an idiot. I forgot about that, and I saw the announcement. <laughs> yeah. Um, but and the yeah. thing is that she sounds nothing like Nona in that show. She's like ten times more annoying. <laughs> I love oh, it, yeah. but she's like ten times more. I want to kill yeah. you, little thing. Well, here's what I've noticed. I, I've noticed that Jade is quickly becoming the next Jeremy Lee, because yeah, mm. Jeremy's in California. Jeremy's spending so much time right. in California now, and Jade is taking over more and more the roles that she would typically play. Give us back mm. Jeremy Sword Art Online. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's still in Funimation <laughs> well. dubs all the time, anyways, because she's Lucy. Right. She, yeah. At the very least, she has fairy tale. So. Along with Todd Habercorn, actually, the two of them have to come back for that. <laughs> that's how we. That's how we rope Todd back. <laughs> Todd and uh, Jeremy yeah. and Patrick Seitz too, actually. I honestly think. I honestly think that Patrick Seitz is a time lord. I don't know how he does it. He has like some interdimensional <laughs> portal that links him between um, California and he Texas. Does a lot of crap. He does a lot of shows. Because not oh, only does he, does he do a lot of acting at Funimation. He does a lot of directing and script writing and stuff and right. all that. Did Patrick Seitz like write Princess Jellyfish or he was part of that menagerie? It wouldn't surprise me. And, and here's the thing. Patrick Seitz is a character on One Piece, the show that never ends. So I'm, Right. He's he will die engine. before One Piece ends. Yeah. <laughs> which, which will be a sad day if that happens. Yeah. But anyway. Yes. Get uh, off topic. <laughs> I think I think we're all in agreement that Jay Saxton mm-hmm. is going to do well with Nona. Right. I think we're in agreement there. Mm-hmm. Um, so next is our mis- mystery woman. Our mystery woman. Um, the black-haired woman. My my prediction, oddly enough, was Lindsay Seidel. I was tossing it around, uh, basing, basing it on how she looked and less about how her voice was. Because the way she looks... Mm. When you listen to their Japanese actress and you look at the at the character's face, you don't really. It's kind of hard to come up with an English equivalent. So I was like, maybe Lydia. Yeah, it, it, she, she looks. She looks kind of like a Lydia Mackey role, but the voice doesn't match up. Or, or maybe someone right. like like Stephanie Young, but the voice again doesn't match up. And I'm like, she's she's definitely one of the more difficult ones right. to have. Like I didn't and, even and, try. And so, I didn't even try. I did. T- <laughs> I did say okay, maybe. Maybe Alexis Tipton. I think Alexis might be able to pull it off. She might have been able to pull it off. However, mm-hmm. we're all wrong like, once again because we're so good at this game. It's Jamie Marhi. Hell yeah! Uh, this one caught me completely by surprise. I'm like, I don't I, know if that's going to be right. I, just, I, I was either. cool with it. Yeah. Like, we only heard her for like five seconds at the end of the episode and... I kind of want to reserve my thoughts until the second episode, mm-hmm. when it's basically episode one replayed, but from the perspective of the woman and Nona instead. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to wait on my judgment until I see that episode and see how that goes. From the one sentence, so yeah, from the one it. sentence that we got, I think it works. Just from the I one thing she will. said. I just, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it will work. Mm-hmm. I just need a little bit more to really like solidify that. Yeah. Well, with, that's, that's just what I need, really. Yeah. With Jamie as a professional, she's done tons and tons of stuff. She's oh, got a voice. Some of her roles I don't think fit her. I think this one will. Mm. 
And in my opinion, yeah. I think Jamie and Alexis are have a very, very similar voice. A lot of times, when I was watching My Bride is a Mermaid for the first time, I honestly thought it was Jamie Markey. I'm like, that sounds a lot like Jamie Markey as son, but not quite. And so then I found out it's someone completely and different. And then you discover it's like, no. Yeah. And then you discover, no. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think they sound like sisters. Plot twist. It'd be weird. It'd be weird if they were and they just had to change their names or something. I don't no. know. If some weird convoluted thing. What if they're actually the same person? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's kind of uh, hard to believe considering how convention visits would go. Touche. Um, <laughs> Time but, um, Lord technology. <laughs> you need a lot of plastic surgery on a daily basis to make that work. Right. But, um, Ooh. anyway. So I think we're sure that Jamie Markey's going to be fine with this, even though I would just like to hear a little bit more so yeah. I can confirm that uh, Yeah, we need to hear more, because she only, again, she only had, like, yeah. one sentence. So. Yeah, her and Nona are the two, like, we haven't heard a lot from. <laughs> right. So, we know we know it's probably going to work, but we just want to hear a little bit more, just to make sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so, let's move on to Deckham, mm-hmm. our uh, resident white-haired bartender. Yeah. I want uh, <laughs> I'll cheap out and say who I thought he was going to be. Everyone thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be Tatum. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Tatum. <laughs> I, at first, I thought it was going to be Tatum, and then I took a second thought. I'm like, you know what? I would prefer Patrick Sykes. Mm. Sykes and then we were all, all wrong. wrong. Yeah, because Degum is a difficult one to pick up, peg down to. Um, it would have been hilarious go- if it was Travis Wallingham, since there's a lot of fan art of Degum and Ginkgo just hanging out. <laughs> That and it's all that, awesome. That would have been amusing. But anyway, um, Alex Organ is actually going to be, is actually Deco. Which, if you don't really know, because he's, I guess, somewhat new still. Mm-hmm. Um, he did Makashima in the first season of Psychopaths. And Hardy, I believe you mentioned he was Togusa for Ghost in the Shell Rise the other day. Oh, yeah, he is. I haven't watched that yet. I think you mentioned that. Yeah. I haven't seen it either, so I don't know. Now, those are big shoes to fill. Any man who can fill Crispin Freeman's shoes... You... Totally. Yeah. It. So. Yeah. Talk about... But, oh, yeah, and by the way, you're replacing Crispin Freeman. Yeah. What? <laughs> Derp. But, yeah. Um, like, cause I, but I've have seen the first season of Psychopaths, so I know how he sounds to Makashima. Mm-hmm. And Makashima, I have a, not. Makashima is a cruel son of a bitch. I'll tell but you. But he's that. so fabulous about it. It is wonderful. Alex Oregon's performance of Makashima is fantastic. So going into um, Death Parade and Deco, I think it's gonna be wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, he could read a phone book as Deckham, and I would keep watching the show. Well, that's... I loved him. Yeah. Well, th- that's the thing, is that it sounds very scripted with, with Deckham's voice. It sounds like there's no emotion at all, and he's just reading for the page. Because that is Deckham. He is a lifeless yeah, much. automaton, really. Deckham? Really? I, I, I want to say it was, it was J.O. who said Deckham has to convey giving zero fucks while giving every fuck in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Or something yeah. along that line. Because Deckham is literally like, yeah, there is no, like, sarcasm or bluntness. Well, he's so blunt and straightforward that you have to do it like that. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go on this. I'll, I'll, I'll stay at your bar. Yeah, definitely Deckham has, like, very, very little to no emotion. Which, with Alex Organ playing the role... Since Makashima kind of see went in the same direction a little bit. Makashima was a like lot more flamboyant, though. He was definitely flamboyant, but he didn't like have any fucks to give. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in other words, yeah. so I feel like this is this is gonna work. Right. Definitely, the first episode alone was like, "Yup, I enjoy this. It's wonderful." <laughs> Creepy mannequin collected little shit. <laughs> As far as characters that haven't been announced yet, like the old guy who we still don't know who his name is, or... Yeah, because we, we still don't have, as of now, who have been announced. Ginty or Mayu. is another arbiter. Yeah. Uh, Ginty, Mayu. Mayu, who is this um, crazy girl. You don't see her until, like, episode six, I think. Yeah. There's also Castra. Oculus? Um, and Oculus. Oculus is the older yeah. one. So... I had predictions for Ginty and Oculus. I don't have anything for Castra, and I don't have anything for Mayu because I didn't really consider her in there. With with Mayu, I Mayu, I thought it would be either Alexis Tipton or Lelia Clark. I can't say because I'm behind it. I haven't met Mayu yet. <laughs> you will, and it'll be wonderful. 
I can I can definitely see um, Tipton or Clark taking Mayu on. Mm-hmm. I can definitely see that. And with Ginty, I wanted to hear either Robert McCollum or Ian Sinclair. Oh dear God, yes. For Ginty, I actually picked Sabbath for this one, but I would I don't be care. okay with any of I those would be three. Okay, I would be okay with um, Sinclair or McCollum as well, like because Ginty's definitely like the more he's my man. manly tough guy. Yeah, he's a manly tough guy, and all three of them can play manly tough guy in their own way. Yeah. So, Ginty's a manly tough guy with this cat. And I, and I say in their own way, because Sinclair's is a little bit different <laughs> compared to uh, Sabater McCollum. So. Yeah. And for the old guy so, who plays uh, pool with Nona, I, I want to see our Bruce Elliott, even though it doesn't really match the voice of the Japanese actor. You know, because he seems like a zany old is. man. Yeah. I don't know who that is, actually. Our Bruce Elliott is like almost every old guy. At oh, yeah. If if the character has a mustache, odds are R. Bruce Elliot. Or is over the age of sixty. Oh, R. Bruce Elliot. I thought you were saying something else. Wow. Yeah. R. Bruce Elliot. Yeah, I was considering him, but I, for me, I also um, am put the prediction out there of either Kent Williams or Jason Douglas. That could work. Ooh. One of those could work too. Mm. Um, Castra, I didn't have anything for. Uh, we barely know of anything about those as characters. Castra says, I think Castra is like one or two lines, right? So far, yeah. She hasn't I believe much. she's the she's the one with the skull, right? Oh, her. Yes. The right. creepy skull. Uh, her. Yeah, creepy skull. I was thinking Stephanie skull Young. Lady. Mm, skull lady. Mm, yes, that one would work. Mm-hmm. That one would definitely work. Oh. Hooray! Yes. <laughs> I didn't have a prediction, but Stephanie Young definitely would work for that. Um, so yeah, that's basically Death Parade in a nutshell, mm-hmm. considering we only got so few characters, mainly just characters in episode one plus Clovis, because he hasn't popped, hasn't said anything yet. Right. Um, Come back, Clovis. But I think in terms of like first impressions of the broadcast dub for this one, I think it's going in a great direction. I like it so far. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really good. I, I really liked it. Uh, I'm really excited for episode two Wednesday. Because you just want to see Clovis. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. E- I'm not even gonna lie. Give me the clovis. <laughs> yeah, all the clovis. All the clovis. It'll, it'll be. Dif- it'll be interesting to see how um, Zach Bolton takes that. Okay. So you think I'm bad about clovis? Mm-hmm. You've not heard anything. <laughs> Mm-hmm.